Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome. Get this camera set up. I was running and gunning today, juking and slipping. The man and the woe man have been chasing me down. Chasing me down. Not in a bad way, in a good way, man. I've been busy. Woo! Busy. Busy, busy, busy. Life is crazy. Just dropped two new podcasts. Two podcasts back to back for the Mike Dolce show. If you don't listen, you don't subscribe. Those in YouTube land, you need to get over there. And those in the Mike Dolce show podcast land, you need to be subscribing to our YouTube channel. We are live right now. And what's beautiful about the YouTube channel is that I can talk to you guys in real time, talk live. My goal was always to do the podcast and have call-ins so I could talk directly to you guys. Well, being that I'm a caveman and being that it's a really big pain in the ass to get all of that tech and gear and hardware and software in place, right now that just doesn't make sense. In our new studio, our next studio, that will have all the built-ins that will be ready to go. But for a little while longer, we're going to use this format. And those in YouTube land know how awesome it is that we get to directly engage. The way it normally goes is I talk for a few minutes on a topic, and I have a topic right now. And then I open the channel up to conversation and questions, and I do my best to answer every question. So usually the first 10 minutes or so, I rant on a topic, and then the next 45, 50 minutes or so, I answer everybody's questions. That's why these shows typically go to an hour, sometimes even more. I think we've done an hour 43 on the YouTube network. So the issue I want to talk about today is the burden of proof, the burden of proof. Now, what do I mean by the burden of proof? Well, in the fitness world, in the nutrition world, there is a burden of proof that most of the fitness experts do not accept. And you as customers, you as consumers, you as the informed party making decisions on your own behalf, you above anybody else should mandate the burden of proof be met before you buy into any diet or exercise program that includes supplements. The burden of proof, ladies and gentlemen, is success. The burden of proof is replicatable results. That's the burden of proof here, not anecdotal stories, which too often we see in the world of the fad, faux, fitness, frauds. We hear anecdotal stories and we hear bullet point conversations about certain studies that were done on niche percentages of the population 10, 20, 50, 80 years ago. That has no relevance to you in your life, in your body, as you are with your goal set. So these false idols put this poorly constructed information out there with zero burden of proof. So what we simply say is follow any system that you want as long as the results are proven and they are replica replicatable amongst a vast majority majority of the population unless you yourself fall into one of these niche categories. And if you do, then you must mandate the burden of proof be met for you as you are. Unfortunately, most of us fall into the vast majority category. We're all relatively fit, relatively healthy, relatively capable, relatively close to our ideal body weight. And ideal body weight isn't stage-ready competition shredded. Ideal body weight is healthy. For men, that's somewhere 12%, 14% is the ceiling body fat. Ladies, that's typically somewhere in the mid-20s or so, possibly touching on the 30. Most of us are within reach of that. Most of us don't suffer from severe metabolic conditions or have chronic illnesses and diseases. Most of us do not. In time, we might develop such issues, mostly as a result of our lifestyle. Hence, lifestyle-related disease kills two-thirds of the American population each year. 
These are the decisions we make in our daily life over the 20, 40, 60 years prior to our untimely and often grotesque death. So again, the burden of proof simply means that you must ensure a wide, wide, wide selection of results have been replicated amongst individuals like you, not in postnatal overweight women, which is one of the prevalent, prevalent studies being pushed through the media and the, the, the narrative on the benefits of the ketogenic diet. They use a study based upon postnatal women that just gave birth to babies who are in the overweight to obese category. And what's interesting is they identify these ladies' diet as a very low carb diet, low carb to very low carb diet. They drop the word ketogenic a few times, a ketogenic like diet. But never once do any of these ladies ever attain the metabolic state of ketosis. Therefore, ketosis has nothing to do with the success or failure of any of these individual subjects. But the members of the faux fitness fraud community use this as one of their major studies to talk about the benefits of the ketogenic diet and why you should follow the ketogenic diet and the great success of the ketogenic diet. But really, the burden of proof is not there. They have not overcome the burden of proof to prove that their system, their statement, their thesis is correct. It's flawed from the get-go. And I point this out because some of you, many of you might hear that like, hey, I heard that dude, that girl talk about that same study. And they talk about the epileptic children. What's the matter, Dolce? You don't want epileptic children to be shredded? Wait, what? What are you guys even talking about? If we're talking to a group of epileptic children or a group of postnatal overweight ladies, then yeah, maybe we should consider some of these protocols, but we're not. We're talking to you and I. We're talking to vast sections of the population. Therefore, we must find and determine and meet the burden of proof for us. And this is the whole point, ladies and gentlemen. It's for you. It can't, I can't do it for you. I can't. The information that we present, the content that we offer, all supports practices and habits and principles and procedures that have been vetted by the burden of proof. What we talk about with the Dolce diet is we're suggesting you do and eat the same foods that have sustained all of life on this planet since the dawn of time. Well, that's a good place to start, right? Eating real food, natural, organic food, unmolested by man to the best of our ability. We don't want man's greedy little synthetic chemical spraying hands on our food. I want Farmer Joe next door, whose father's 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 mother's grandmother started the farm and started the pumpkin patch and the, the, the cornfield or raising the livestock or what have you. And this is the way we've done it. And we don't care about them synthetic chemicals. Not that they talk like that or they're redneck, but this is just me. So we start there. We don't exclude blueberries or blackberries or raspberries or apples or raisins or bananas or potatoes or rice or beans or legumes. We don't exclude them based upon a macronutrient profile. Why would we do that? So basically, you're starting and these fitness frauds start at they start their system at a point of differentiation how can we be different what will make us stand out okay let's start there and then we'll back out into our philosophy and we'll make it fit into this little square box well that doesn't do you guys well that doesn't do the vast majority of the human population any good 
that creates disordered eating patterns. That creates a variety of nutrient deficiencies. That creates the yo-yo syndrome where you start a diet, you have some results, you plateau, you can't get any more results. And what happens? You start eating what you kind of used to eat or you binge eat and you bounce and you yo-yo back out. Usually most people who try these fad diets, they gain more, more weight back than they actually lost. So if you lose 20 pounds following one of these exclusionary disordered fad diet programs, typically you gain 25 to 30 back. And you lose six months to multiple years because you're so disenfranchised by diets. I try, I've tried every diet out there and none of them work for me. No, it's because these diets don't work. It's because they're garbage diets. They're fad diets. They're fraudulent with the way that they're put into the population by very sophisticated, very intelligent marketers. What I say is, those who are deceiving you guys are either very intelligent, so smart they know exactly what they're doing and how to get over on you, or they're very dumb. They don't see how stupid their advice actually is, and they're selling it with pure passion because they love it. And that's the sad thing because both are equally effective, as you see right now. You walk around your office, talk to all your friends and all your teammates, and you find out how many of them are actually dieting. Probably 50%, now, this is just a guesstimate, probably 50% of the people you know say they're dieting, they're dieting, they're about to diet, they're in some sort of, of diet, they're on the dieting spectrum. How many of those people are simply following an ordered eating pattern? Eating earth-grown nutrients, that's real food, in wide variety, within category, real food every two to four hours based upon activity. What would I just do? What do I'm about to do? I'm eating based upon replenishing the raw materials that were utilized through that two to four hour bout of exertion, or I'm providing new raw materials for the next two to four hours of exertion or lack thereof with the general understanding of the next, you know, 36 to 72 hours of the micro phytonutrient needs, the, the other building blocks have the supply line running. And that's just a little more context to the simple principles of we eat real food every two to four hours until we're satisfied, not until we're full. How many people out there who are dieting are doing that? And when I say eat until satisfied, not until full, that improves digestive efficiency. I don't need as a 200 pound sexy fucking beast. I don't need to eat 1,200, 1,600, 1,800 calories in a single meal. I don't need, and it's actually counterproductive for me to try and spread 28 to 3,200 calories per day into a six hour time restricted eating window. My digestive system much more readily and easily and efficiently can process four to 600 calorie meals broken up throughout the day, every two to four hours. It's a much more efficient di digestive process. So how many people out there that are dieting that you know are actually eating an ordered lifestyle, not a disordered lifestyle? How many people do you know that walk into the grocery store or walk out into their backyard and see that the blueberries are fresh and ripe and ready to be plucked and eaten today? And not like, oh, I can't eat those because those will put me over my carb limit. So I'm going to go back in the house and eat a stick of butter, a block of cheese, a pound of bacon, and a bag of pork rinds because that is approved. That's approved. Go. Fucking crazy, right? Does that sound crazy to you? Of course it's crazy. It's insane. And they cannot replicate results. And I just, you know, use that as an example because that's an easy example. That's one of thousands of examples of each of these individual fraudulent fad diet types. So the point of this conversation for you guys is to ensure the burden of proof has been met.
with like individuals. And we're not as special as we think we are. We're all pretty goddamn average. I don't even care about your, your, your race and your gender. We're, the human species is pretty homogenous as compared to other species, as compared to other forms of life. We're pretty fucking homogenous. We all have very similar um, organs and a very similar biochemical process. Even our hormone system, though there are differences, they're all pretty fucking basic and similar. Our digestive system is damn near fucking identical. The way we grow, our lifespan, all pretty fucking similar. So when we talk about a vast majority of the population, it's, yeah, it's most of us. Most of us fall into that category. There's a few of us that develop issues and disease and disorder and condition. There's a few of us that have just these genetic traits that were hereditary that we were born with. But at, that is such a small percentage of the population right now. Eventually, you might fall into that category. And if you do, then pay uh, or ensure the burden of proof is met on that niche protocol you might need at that time. But for the average, relatively healthy adult, 18 to 65, we all pretty much fall into about the same category with the same needs, and we all have pretty much the same burden of proof. So keep that in mind. Let me answer some questions now. Mike Helms, do you need a blood panel to go on three weeks to shredded? No, you do not. Three weeks to shredded is a part of our online membership program at the Dolce diet.com. You can join the four week or the 12 week, three weeks to shredded plus living lean bundle. It is the most successful healthy weight loss program ever devised, but no, you do not need a blood panel to sign up. You do need a blood panel to be a healthy human being. To be a mature human being, you need a blood panel, and we suggest you get your blood work done every three months. You have a doctor's appointment. Every three months, you get your blood work done and updated and reviewed with your medical practitioner. That's what we strongly, strongly, strongly suggest to everybody. Please, human, get your blood work done. Uh, Mr. Khan, you think it's okay to have some sugar like in eat? like in oatmeal, um, not processed sugar. No, no, we get our natural sugars from fresh fruits, maybe raw honey, raw local honey, but we don't have processed sugar or synthetic sugar in our oats. No, 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 no. That's, fr that's what fruit is for. That's the whole point. Fruit is nature sugar man or woman, Mr. Console man. Alex, hey, no, Alex, hey, what's up, Alex? Good to see you. Seth, what's up, my brother from another mother? What's up, Seth? How you doing, homie? Unemployed Mario Yamasaki. What's up, Mike? What's up? <laughs> Mario, you get that job yet? Seth, studio awesome. Upping the game. Up in the game, homie. Always up in the game for you guys. Always trying to improve, improve the way we deliver this message, right? Educate, inspire, and entertain. The entertainment side, we always try and keep that updated so we can engage more and more and more with you guys. Hopefully, we have even better video and better audio and, and just you know a bigger, better studio so we can have more interactive guests. It'd be nice for me to sit down with my guests, um, you know, kind of like, like uh, Shab does and, and Callan with the fighter and the kid, the big brown breakdown uh, below the belt. I was just on below the belt in Brendan's studio. I was fucking blown away, man. They up the game. I was like, God damn, I need to seriously up my game. And we've been playing with the concept for a while, but this has felt really good, right? We've got great engagement, great conversations with you guys. We've certainly upped it all since the beginning of the year. I think you guys will agree with that. I'm no longer shooting with my iPhone anymore, right? Direct to my iPhone. Now we got the live going. We got a higher end HD camera. We got the updated Shure audio mics and soundboards, all that stuff. But we need to update once again for you guys. Um, Denny, your thumbnails are hilarious. Denny, I appreciate it. It's so it's hard, right? Like, so I just let the title inspire the pose and I just react to the title and the burden of proof, baby. There we go. Tyler Rose, notification squad. What's up, Tyler? Good to see you. Mind muscle connected. What's up, man? What do you think of Blaha's beefs and daily drama comment? The beefs with Alf for Destiny and other YouTubers are really childish, in my opinion, and make Blaha look so pathetic. Um, mind muscle connection. I gotta tell you. I don't do beef, right? I don't do beef. 
anytime I've had a disagreement with anybody, I, I, I contact them. I do my best to contact them. Um, I would have contacted uh, Jason Blaha, but I don't know how to get in touch with him. Um, I was able to contact a couple other YouTubers or Instagrammers on Instagram or even other coaches. I don't put it all out there. Um, and I think I, I did a commentary on, on Blaha's um, BMI and body weight where he very transparently, he disclosed his personal data. And that's a big step. So, and I had to give him credit for that. And I know, and a lot of people bash him for that, but Hey, I don't, I don't get involved in the drama. That's not what I do. I'm, I'm a health and fitness commentator. I'm a coach. I'm a trainer. I'm going to keep to my zone and talk on that. Um, I got a little bit of a wise ass personality, but that's the entertainment portion of what we do. If I'm not semi entertaining, then fuck, nobody's going to listen. And you're not going to get the kernels of the message to help you in real time in your life. So the beefs that he has, it works for him. Right. I mean, his 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 views are going up. His subscribers, I'm sure, are going up. His engagement seems to be going up. His comments are going up. His likes are going up. Thumbs up and his thumbs down seem to be going down. Um, man, he's I got to say he's running a good YouTube business and the other dudes are beefing with him. Now, I actually I don't watch the videos deeply to see. I don't know what the beefs are. I'm stronger than him or he's stronger than me or he's not as strong as he said or his form sucks. And we're all we're all suspect or we're all susceptible to critical feedback right i am you are everybody is somebody could be like hey dolce you like your hat's always fucking crooked in your video or whatever and you know it's whatever the, the criticism is um so that being said man i think the, probably the biggest channels are the ones with the drama the hodge twins man drama over everybody chris jones drama over everybody rich piana so controversial and drama based figure one of the fewer guys like jeff cavallari who was able to build his channel without drama but at the same time the recent v said shred drama has catapulted his channel even more and catapulted the the, the subsidiary channels around jeff not that they're agencies of jeff's um but the channels that that kind of support what Jeff is doing on the positive side. They use the drama to grow their channels. So that being said, drama sells. I don't do the drama. We probably would do a little bit better from a total subscribership if we did, um, but we don't. I, I like the audience that we attract. And if people expect me to be a drama guy, they're not going to get the drama videos. I just don't do tra drama content well. Um, even when I disagree with people, I like to have intellectual conversations with people I disagree with. So there's no fuck him drama and debate. Now, where I do get heated is the, the, the global mindset. That's where I get mad. I get mad at that stuff. I get mad at lifestyle related illness. I get mad at childhood obesity and diabetes. I get mad at disordered eating patterns. I get mad at fraudulent coaches or concepts um, that take advantage of the population, but I don't call out individual humans and personalities. I don't do that. So I, I think that's my kind of long winded answer. Um, Seth, Mike, I was a 150 pound nerd. I ate this muscle triplicator bar. Now I'm Jay Cutler. That's exactly what happens. And if you follow many of these, these supplement companies, that's what they'll have you believe a photo of, a um, a Mr. Olympia type body eating some bullshit fucking bogus synthetic chemical laden bar. And they're claiming the bar gave them their results, which is horseshit. Aaron Thorne. Hey, Mike Dolce, similar to the krill oil question. Is there any benefit? Um, or difference of taking five mil five grams of creatine post training or splitting that with two and a half before and after. I haven't seen any discernible difference. Excuse me. I take my creatine typically two ways. I take it with the first meal of the day, um, or I take it intra workout with a whey protein isolate. When I'm taking creatine, that's the way I typically do it. Part of that seems to be for digestion. It feels better when I have creatine with a meal and I don't see any difference plus or minus in how my body responds to it. The type of strength I get, the type of musculature that pops out for a little while, um, both ways, I don't seem to have any difference in results. And the same thing with our clients. We typically say take it with a meal, typically first meal of the day, earlier in the day, or take it intra workout with, with uh, your, your, your way. And that's typically what happens. Um, Werber Guerrero. Hey, Mike, is it true the endomorph body type like myself have way too much trouble to burn body fat? No, it, it's it might be more difficult in a way, but it's 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 easy. There's been many endomorphs who get fucking shredded shredded and endomorph yeah there's a genetic predisposition for a certain body type but an endomorph an ectomorph a mesomorph that's also a mentality 
it's a lifestyle and maybe it's nature nurture because you're born that way. You tend to respond that way because society treats you that way. Oh, it's, it's, it's big Mike, a hey, big guy. You can eat two of those. So you tend to do that. But if you're kind of leaner and lighter and more shredded, you might be more prone to follow a lifestyle that's conducive to that. Maybe more running, more body weight conditioning work because you can do pull-ups and sit-ups and crunches um, and push-ups for days and get lots of you know, societal feedback because, oh my God, you're awesome. You can do a hundred pushups. You can run so fast or wow, look at those abs. So you live within that, that, that societal archetype. Um, that's just one possibility that a lot of people don't talk about, but that's very real. But then there's a genetic predis predisposition. Now I started, I was a pretty classic ectomorph. And then through weightlifting, I changed my physique to be very much an endomorph, even when I, or an, an a mesomorph. Even when, and that was through my, my high school um, wrestling days. You know, I graduated high school, senior year in high school, 210 pounds at five foot nine, pretty fucking yoked. I look like Superman, like the Superman muscle physique is pretty much how I looked um, leaving high school, going into college. Now that position, I, I didn't finish college, by the way, that's a whole nother story. But at that phrase, that, that phase, that transition of life um, is important to, to determine. I started ecto, I became mezzo, and then I started the powerlifting. And I completely turned into an endo. So now I'm more of a, uh, of a meso endomorph. I have the tendency to be both. So the way you're born does not specifically chain you to that physical type. I changed mine accidentally, but through pursuit and lifestyle. Uh, I'll exclude wait, wait, oh, wow, so many questions. Let me try and answer. That. I got to rapid fire some of these. We're already at a half hour. Um, bu, 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 bu. Hey, Mike, is it true? The okay. Um, you mean if I get knocked up, then keto may work for me, <laughs> Seth? That could be true. Could be true. Um, I'll exclude turnips. God awful. Yuck. Um, Carlos, actually, I like turnips. I've got a good recipe, big turnips. I have to start doing my BJJ at 7 a.m. and following living lean. Should I do BJJ fasted and eat a snack or have the breakfast bowl? I would probably blend the breakfast bowl, help digest it, break it down just a little bit more. I would do the blended breakfast bowl prior to BJJ, me personally. But see how you feel. Maybe try a day or two with and a day or two without. See how your energy level is. I just found out that we burn a lot of calories while sleeping, so that's pretty cool. Luca, that is true. Christian, do you have any opinions on microdosing with concise altering substances, and when are you going on the Joe Rogan podcast? So I don't specifically know about microdosing personally. I don't microdose. I don't know athletes who microdose. I've never seen a true microdosing protocol. I do know or I have listened to other experts in the field who have talked about microdosing and essentially I think Victor Conti, you know, like him or hate him. I think he's probably one of the experts and he had a pretty good description of what microdosing is and I won't do him justice. So you need to research and find out what he had said on it, but essentially there's certain type of, of, of compounds, pharmaceutical compounds, PEDs that improve performance. But some of these compounds have relatively small half lives, which means they stay in your body for short periods of time. And if you take a, and I, this is where I kind of get a little lost on the biochemistry. If you take a small enough amount of it, micro dose, the micro dose of it over a period of time, there will be a super physiological impact on the user increasing performance. There will be a PED benefit of it but it will lay under or kind of glide under the ability for detection to find it in some cases. And there's a lot of variables around this. It sounds like a lot of fucking work for what sounds like a little bit of a benefit. And in our opinion, if athletes spent that much time and energy and even resources focused on lifestyle protocol, like making it 24 hours a day to train, to repair, to pre-fuel, to recover, to reduce inflammation, to enhance um, soft tissue health, you know, skeletal alignment, mental and physical and, and visualization. If they put all the time that they do into kind of beating these tests for little margins of, of percentage of progress, 
and they put it into more of a, the holistic approach, which is a fucking pain in the ass. It's a pain in the ass, truly. But it can't be more of a pain in the ass than waking up like three times or six times or multiple times in the middle of the night every night to take your tiny, tiny, tiny little syringe shot and then have to hide everything because, God forbid, the, the, the Gestapo, the USADA Gestapo comes barging in your door. I can't imagine that that creates a, a healthy performance lifestyle. So that's, that's what I know about it. That's what I know about it. Uh, when are you going on the Joe Rogan podcast? Anytime Mr. Rogan feels um, he wants to have a conversation, I would love to talk to Joe. I think Joe is probably one of the few minds on the planet that has a deep enough understanding of what I do with regards to general health, fitness, weight loss, lifestyle management, but really longevity improvement. That's the nature of our company. We're a longevity company, but also the crossover to the world of mixed martial arts, combat sports, and elite, elite athletics. He can actually answer those questions and push me as far down. I would love for somebody, and I haven't had this yet. I haven't had somebody to push me to the wall to dig deep, and I can explain the whys, the why that we do what we do, because most of the time I explain what we do, because what we do is pretty different, very different from what the majority of everybody else is doing. So most of the time is with, individuals who are let's say you know blue belt maybe purple belt level in health fitness nutrition and elite athletics and i i speak respectfully to that level but joe's a black belt man and i would love a, a mental educated black belt to drill down and get down like why is the dolce diet the most successful weight loss program ever devised equally for weight restricted combat athletes and postnatal obese women. Why is ours more successful than any other? Why do we, why are we the only company, the only system in, in you know, let's say Joe's career and in the history of the UFC, why is ours the most successful? Why is ours the only system with a 100% success ratio spread over 20 plus years? Why is that? What do we do so differently? And I would love for Joe or somebody like Joe to push me down that rabbit hole and really have a deep long form conversation because it can't be handled in sound bites. I do talk a lot in sound bites because most of the time, like you guys, when I talk in sound bites, I'm talking to the vast majority of the population. And many of you, you are at the white to blue belt level of nutrition. And it's important that you have that, that foundation of actionable information that you can apply to your life right now. But I always inform you guys and strongly suggest and really plead and beg you, everything I say, jump down your own rabbit hole and do your own research. Everything I talk about, please research, learn more, write it down, get books, you know, bookmark pages on your, your website, keep them up. I, I take these links. I have a running file in my email. And I just like, and it's always just sitting there in, in draft. And I just constantly throw these new links into the draft of this, this living document that allow, and I have it, you know, subtext subheaded. So I always go through and I have all this, this information. Every time I have an idea, I put it there. I research, I live it. I print it out. I whiteboard it. I yellow, you know, mark it. My team, we sit and we shop, talk about, it. we call each other and talk about it and debate and devil's advocate it. That's what you guys should do. So I would love somebody again to answer. I get so verbose sometimes. Um, somebody like Joe, who was just, you know, the, the, the utmost respect for him with his knowledge base. It's, it's fucking amazing. It's, it's you got to like hold down to the desk sometimes when Joe's talking because he's got a deep knowledge base. But he's a guy that could push me and get all this information out to you. So it's not just the, the actionable. We can really drill down deep. I mean, we can go in on, on an archaeological dig here and get out the, the toothbrushes and really get down to the nitty gritty of the why, the backbone. And it's been hard for me for all the years that I do these interviews because most people, they, they don't even understand. But Joe has that understanding that we could walk down that path together. Darren Mills. Hard work plus correct diet as you do works incredibly, but a lot of people want to hear easy shortcuts and get taken in by charlatans and weird supplements because they want it easy. Darren Mills, you just hit it on the head. People want it easy. They want that pill right now. And that pill is just simplicity. Keep it simple, stupid. That's what, that's what the pill is. Keep it simple, stupid. Keep it simple. Let's eat the same foods that have sustained all of life on this planet from the dawn of time in their most natural, most fresh, ripe, nutrient dense form. Let's just do that. Let's just do that. Can we all, can we just do that? Can we just do that? 
How about we just do that? How's that? How's that? Let's get rid of all the synthetic chemicals. Let's get rid of all the bullshit. Let's just get rid of all that for 10 years. Let's see what happens. Let's see how healthy we get. Let's get rid of all the processed foods and all the synthetic chemicals. But Dolce, starving babies are going to die in Ethiopia. Yeah, that's not who I'm talking to. That's they're, they're not on fucking Wi-Fi right now, motherfucker, right? They're not on YouTube right now. They're not listening to the Mike Dolce Show podcast on their iPhone with their AirPods right now, right? They're fucking looking for water. And, and that's where the sacks of rice and even GMO rice, that's what it's intended for. That's fine. High five. No problem. Yes. Feed these kids. Let's get the seeds out there. Let's work on the irrigation. Let's get proper, healthy, clean running water to those niche areas of the population. See what I did there? Let's get that done. But the 350 million fat fuck Americans, there's over 200 million, essentially two out of three Americans are overweight or obese. Two out of three Americans will die of lifestyle related illness. Guess what? That's not because you're starving. That's not because you're starving. Americans don't understand what starving is. I grew up poor, 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 baby. No heat, no electricity, no running water in my house for nearly a decade. We didn't starve. There was the poor, poor, so poor, no money, no money. Poor didn't starve. Come on now. So I don't even know how I got on that one. Um, it is hilarious when you call yourself a sexy beast and flex your bicep. Hilarious. Truth, baby. The bicep of truth right there. Bicep of truth. Lee Mason. Hey, coach, been using the three weeks of shredded book, and I'm 10 pounds down in 10 days. Boom. Three weeks of shredded was designed to lose one pound per day for 21 days while preparing world-class athletes for weight class dominated sport with which they had to compete at a world-class level the next day. Three Weeks to Shredded is the most successful healthy weight loss program ever devised as proven by the world's greatest athletes with a 100% success ratio. But also Lee Mason supports that claim. The burden of proof proves it is replicati replicatable amongst a wide selection of the vast majority of the population. The burden of proof, ladies and gentlemen, you can go to the dolcediet.com right now and check it out. Right now, right now, and check it out. The Dolce Diet.com, the four week or 12 week, three weeks to shred it and living lean bundle. Go check it out. If you're interested, check it out. But Lee Mason is down 10 pounds in 10 days while going through the 21 day program. You're fucking awesome. Um, how should I transition into the living lean recipes? Dolce killing it. Um, Lee Mason, just keep going. If you're in the online program right now, you will naturally transition right into the 12 week program. And what's beautiful about the 12 week program, you can start with the eight weeks of living lean and then finish with the four weeks of three weeks of shredded because there's a bonus week, or you can start with three weeks of shredded, get that weight loss jump start, and then enter into living lean, which is very much a body recomposition program. We're trying to build lean muscle tissue, shape, curve, tone, tighten while losing that non-functional body weight. Three weeks to shred it is much more of that aggressive. We're going to lose as much weight as we can in 21 days while being fully fed. Six meals a day on the three weeks of shredded program from the time you wake up to the time you go to sleep and even dessert. There is dessert, as you guys know, on the three weeks of shredded program. It works. It works. Kirsten, Mike, just want to let you know me on my Instagram name is my only dear. I saw you. I saw you, but it was weird because I was in my truck, so I couldn't quite like um, get in and, and engage with everybody. Um, so you don't think I'm a troll on your DM looking forward to sharing progress into after crushing the goals. Kirsten, I will look at that. You are awesome. Young lady guys and girls, Kirsten Colloway has been here the last couple of weeks. Also, she is crushing the online version of three weeks to shredded at the Dolce diet.com.com too. Johan, the reason these principles work for me is because number one, I was ready. Number two, it's not a diet, but a lifestyle. I am proud to know of you and your team. Thank you. Papa D. Um, Johan, I appreciate that. That is awesome. Thank you. Very, very much. And that's, I just got all these weird pop-ups on my screen. Um, Thank you so much. And that's why I'm here. And Johan, I get it now. Cause I was like, yo, then Han, but it's like, Johan, um, Johan, I appreciate that we are here. This is a diet. It's not, or this is a lifestyle. It's not a diet. It's a lifestyle. I don't even know my own fucking tagline, but it's not a diet. It's a lifestyle. We teach you healthy ordered eating programs. Paul Thompson, what do you ask the doctor? I want to see where my blood is on my food intake. What do I need? What my body is missing? Um, 
So really, Paul, what you do is just go to your doctor and schedule a wellness test. And they might say, because wellness test is, is pretty accepted by most medical professionals, um, but say, listen, I haven't been to the doctor in a while. I want to get everything done. I want a complete checkup. I want to get all my blood work done. I want to see where I stand. Well, what blood work? All my blood work. All my blood work. What is my, what is my healthcare cover for preventative wellness? What is my healthcare cover? Many healthcare companies have wellness tests built in. Most health insurance will allow you to preventative blood tests per year. You can get your two big panels and then in the quarters, you can get your two small panels where you get your, your, your blood sugar, you get your thyroid, um, you get your lipid panel, uh, you get a few, your vitamin D, you get a few other, uh, your hormone panel, you get a few other, you know, tests in the, the quarters, but in the, 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 you know, what we say is, is like December and June or July, get your big panels. December is great because it's the end of the year where it's all dark. You can see how your body dips summer because the sun is nice and bright. It's a different time of year. I always compare my dark and my bright blood panels, my December and my July, and I want them to be as equal as possible. And then you have your spring and your fall panels where it's more kind of moderate um, lifestyle and climate. So that, that's the, what we try and do. Plus, it's easy to remember. Joe Brown would love to see you on the Joe Rogan podcast. Let Mr. Rogan know with respect, just however you can, uh, you know, let Joe know um, that, that you have an interest. Just let him know and, and then he can make his decision. Um, Walt, is raw honey an okay sweetener? I love a small spoon. Um, I would raw honey. Yeah. Raw honey. I was like raw sugar for a second. Yeah. We use local raw honey in our house every day. And it's awesome. We noticed because we live in Las Vegas, it's dry. There's lots of bullshit allergies out here. We noticed Victoria when she was two, she started getting like a little bit allergy syndromes, the watery eyes, the little like, uh, like allergy black eye, they call it from kind of rubbing and irritation, uh, very sneezy in the morning. Uh, we started her on a local raw honey, just mixed into her breakfast bowl. And over the course of like of the course of like the first bottle, so maybe three weeks or so, it subsided, almost completely went away. You know, so and there's good science to support that, but at the same time, local raw honey is the best form of honey anyway. Um, do you have any different or specific recommendations for those with digestive illness, auto, autoimmune gastritis, for example? Josh Teeper, in your case, I would have you speak with one of our registered dietitians. That's why we have registered dietitians on staff to work with anybody who is suffering from a medical condition. It would not be appropriate for me here to give you specific information based upon your condition without knowing an actual diagnosis. What you would do is you would work with one of our registered dietitians, likely through our 30-minute one-on-one consultation. You can go to dolcedietshop.com to set that up. You'll receive a comprehensive intake form, as we call it, where you'll answer a list of questions through digital. You just answer, you press send, it comes right back to the team. Our team then reviews it, and then you'll be put in touch with the team member that is most specific to you. In your case, it would be one of our registered dietitians, likely our lead dietitian. Some of you who want training programs, maybe you'll talk to one of our certified coaches, and some of you might even talk to me. I try and talk to at least four of you per day through these online 30-minute um, consults, and you don't even know you're going to get me. I'm like, hey, what's up? And you're like, oh, it's Dolce. I wish we had Meg instead of you. And I'm like, oh, I'm so sad now. Okay. And then, you know, that's the way it works sometimes. So that's, that would be my suggestion, but you should be working with a registered dietitian first and foremost to ensure there are no contradictions with your care. Um, Vic, hello, Vic. What would you say is the most overlooked attribute, mental and or physical, that inspiring personal trainers should develop and work on? Thanks from Italy. Um, all you provide. Vic, well, number one, if you came to our next Dolce Diet Certification and Nutrition Conference, you would get exactly the question that you are asking answered in over three days because I go deep. Anybody who works in the fitness profession, the health fitness profession, any business owner, any entrepreneur, I go deep and tell you how we built one of the largest, most respected global brands in fitness from the loft in my rented townhouse, from a, literally from a $10 picnic table in my kitchen. My wife and I, that, that's our story. Um, for the first six months we were married, we got a $10 plastic picnic table and we had it as our kitchen table, our dinner table in our $600 a month apartment um, at Red Sunsets in Gresham, Oregon. That's the true story right there. It started, the Dolce Diet literally started on a $10 plastic picnic table sitting in my kitchen. And when I say kitchen, I just mean it was like, you know, the area next to the stove in my tiny one bedroom apartment. That being said, personal trainers, man, you got to go all in. In my experience, personal trainers are like bartenders or strippers with respect. 
I don't say that disrespectfully. I say that because it's a great way to make short cash and then get out. But most bartenders and most strippers, they burn out quick because of the emotional input, because of the hours, because they're poor with scheduling typically, because they don't treat it like a business. They treat it like it's a cash grab and it's not. Most personal trainers, whether you work for yourself as an independent or you work as a part of a team in a corporation, you must handle your business as a business. You must look at the logistics. You must be well-trained. I go through my R's. You must be well-researched. You must be able to replicate results. You must develop a reputation of integrity. You must develop a resume of like clients to the niche and sector with which you are trying to grow your business. And then at the end, number five is where the rewards come in. The rewards will never come first, specifically as a personal trainer. I hope that helps. But anybody who's interested, come to the DDC July 6th, 7th, and 8th here in Las Vegas. Go to dolce.shop.com and reserve your spot. It will blow your mind. Speaking of, Coach Desiree Schmitz here. I love how you handle the haters. You don't feed into the drama for sure. You really don't got time for that. I don't have time for that. I'll throw a little shade from time to time because I can and it's fun and it amuses me. But no, I don't get into it. Yo, where's the Kit Kat at? Kit Kat's in the garbage, my man. Gone forever. No need. David Boudoin, love your comments about my dad. I am with you, as my mom says, it's all common sense, but what used to be common isn't common anymore. Yeah, we say it's common sense once we've heard it, but you look at how many of these false fitness professionals act like I'm insane for telling you guys to just simply eat real food, get away from processed junk. You should need an exogenous nothing, an exogenous nothing. You should not have to take a supplement to make you feel good, to make your brain work, to give you energy simply because you're eating a disordered diet program that they're professing. That makes no sense. That makes no sense. Yo, Mike, do you know any bodybuilding gyms in Orange County and San Diego that you can recommend while on vacation? Robbie, I do not, unfortunately. Um, I believe Milo Sarshev. Um, I would look up Milo Sarshev. I believe he has a gym. Check him out on Instagram um, and let him know I sent him your way. I believe he's got some facilities down there. And if you have a chance to train with Milo Sarshev, do it. I believe he has a facility in San Diego. I believe. I forget right now. Uh, but check him out on Instagram. He'll hook you up. Um, Roman Graham. What's up, Roman? He's training Sergio Oliva Jr. right now, by the way. Um, number of facts. What, what's your opinion on the elevation training mask? Is it a money grab? Yeah, it's a money grab. Uh, it's a money. Grab. It's so silly. It's so silly. Um, hold on. Phone's ringing. Uh oh. Hello, wife. Oh, I'm doing a podcast. Can I call you right back? I'm almost done. I got like three minutes left of the feed. Oh, fine. Okay. But ah, always answer the phone when the wife calls. That is a pro tip. When the wife calls, the phone must be answered. I don't care what's happening. You answer the phone. See that? Even live, I'm answering the phone when the wife calls. Um, bu -bu 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 -bu. Isn't it, yeah, the elevation has money grab. They fuck, they're grabbing a lot of money though. So from a business perspective, respect the hustle from a actual functional use. No, no, no. Hey, Mike, I could do my list cardio after um strength workout yes you can even if still fasted i wouldn't do five by five fasted jesus christ no prs for you but yes you can do a form of list list after you're fed five by five mr hanky you got it mr hanky hot dog too much muscle bad for boxing if so what exercises to help boxing um yeah but you need enough muscle so too much muscle would be a bodybuilder too much muscle to move right immobility just because the muscle's so massive um, you need the, the, the nice amount of, 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 of weight and pliability and elasticity, you know, fighters need to be elastic more than anything. They need that elasticity to their, their, their muscular action. Bodybuilders are the bigger the muscle that becomes much more difficult. Seth, hopefully Rogan will have you on soon. Have you gotten in touch, um, to have Jeff? No, I haven't heard back from Jeff yet. So we have a couple friends in common. Um, I don't like to do that though. I don't be like, Hey, uh, can you give him my number? I don't like to do that. So if I can't personally get in touch with somebody, I just let it, I just let it go. You know what I mean? I, I don't like to be that guy because people do that to me all the time. And respectfully, I can't give out, I'm not going to give out information or numbers, you know? So you know, I, I go through, I, I go to their contact page. I try and, you know, hit a DM like on Twitter or Insta or whatever. So we do it the kind of old school way. And we probably could get a couple more guests 
Um, maybe if we did leverage our friendship network, but that's, that's just weird. I don't need to just logged in. Love your show, Mike, Steve. I appreciate that. Thank you. Boxing. Now just curious, ever try any sport sort of meditation. I've been doing transcendental meditation for a year and I feel amazing. I have, I've actually played with TM myself in a few different forms of visualization. What works really well for me, we have built into our 20 minute morning. I'm talking fast right now because I got to wrap up this stream. Um, we work our 20 minute morning and a 20 minute morning always starts with five minutes of visualization. And simply, I just sit there in a quiet, dark room, usually my office, and I count backwards from 300. Usually I get into the 280s and I just kind of go limp. 300. Just breathing deeply. And I don't say it out loud in my mind. 300, 299, just breathing deeply. And I just fall into my own zone. That works really well for me because different, if you put too much time into studying meditation, not that that's a bad thing, that increases the barrier to entry for a lot of people. And that happened to me for like a year. I felt like I wasn't doing it correctly, so I wasn't doing it all. And then finally, I was like, you know what these have in common? All these forms of meditation have in common is breathing and a mantra. And that's what I started doing. It works great. Um, is granola a bad option? Is it good for you? Well, most granola is bad because there has processed sugars and sweeteners and preservatives added to it. Can you give me a good doctor in Las Vegas to use to get this blood work done? Paul, shoot me a DM on Instagram. Um, and I can, you know, hopefully help you find, there's a few good ones in town. I'll give you a, a list that you can actually choose. Cause I can't exactly endorse any one or the other. Should you take fish oil capsules once every day? Well, I take six on it. Krill oils every day. I take three in the morning with breakfast, my breakfast bowl and three at night with dinner. And you can go to on it.com slash Dolce. You'll save 10%, uh, which is always a good one. But you guys know, I take six of the on it krill oils every day, every day, every day. And it's fucking awesome. I take the on it active B, B complex. Um, and what else I started taking their, their mineral product. Um, but, but, but I forget the name of that right now. My apologies. And I take a vitamin D three. I take that twice a day at 5,000. I use made by a company known as Jaro that I don't endorse and they don't pay me. Um, riding home bike after waking up instead of walking it's raining yeah no problem apple cider vinegar oh fuck this stream keeps jumping apple cider vinegar what's your take it's good on paper but it jacks up my stomach and a lot of people so we kind of avoid it uh where's my kit kat tempest it's in the garbage sorry mike how much should i spend on an engagement ring for my lady as little as you have to as little as you have to, as little as you have to, that whole bullshit about, you know, an engagement ring should be three months of salary is absolutely fucking horse shit, terrible financial advice because three months of your salary invested at the a, 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 a low relative interest rate, 8%, tets per 10%, the market has averaged between eight and 10% for the last hundred or so years. If you can invest three months of your salary at eight to 10%, do you know how fucking rich you would be? Maybe I'll actually do that right now while I'm talking to you guys. Hopefully, I'm not blinked out, and hopefully you guys can see me as I'm looking at this other page. I'm going to tell you right now. So uh, there we go. Here's the calculator. And let's say you are 30 years old. You're going to retire at 60 two years old. And let's just say what the average um, income in the United States is $50,000 per year. What's that about four grand per month, three months salary, that's $12,000. Holy shit. So $12,000 you have, you're going to invest $0 thereafter rate of return will be 10%. What does that turn into? Well, holy shit. When you guys are 62, you'll have $253,000 in the bank. Ideally invested into a Roth, a Roth IRA, ideally, because you can actually take 5,500 for you as the husband and 5,500 for her as the wife. That's $11,000 and you can take $1,000 and that can be your Coke and stripper money. You can run around and have a little extra fun when you go on vacation. Not that I endorse such things. This is my practical approach. And hopefully this makes sense for everybody listening right now. Get her something nice. Get her something beautiful. Get her something she loves. Get her something that has has culture and history and a story attached to it. Don't get her the biggest, shiniest rock. When you have more money stacked up and you can spend that and it's not even noticeable, which you should if you take this type of financial advice, then fucking spoil her rot and get her everything and anything that she wants because she deserves it. When you're first getting married, get your money in order. Don't start your marriage in debt. So that is my answer. Um, be doting and... Some people might not agree. They might not like it at first, but you all know it's true. I would much rather, my wife would much rather have a quarter million dollars just sitting in the bank when we retire at 62 
or that we can draw at 62. Shit, you might even be able to draw it at 59 and a half, depending on your specific circumstance. You can leave it in there a little bit longer. Let's say it's not 62. Let's say it's 65. Let's just do that for fun. Let's say you're 30 now, and at 65, what does that 12 grand turn into? Well, shit, that turns into $337,000 if invested properly in just a, a, a comprehensive list of mutual funds that match what the market is doing anyway. This is how easy it is, guys and girls. This is how easy it could be. And this is a little bit of Uncle Mike um, tries to talk to you about. I don't get too deep into this stuff, but those of you who hear what I just said and it makes sense for you, just change your life. Oh, everybody right now, do yourself a favor. Go and purchase The Richest Man in Babylon, the book. The Richest Man in Babylon, the book. Read that book. Get the audio book. Read that book twice in a row. Twice, don't not read it twice in a row. Read it twice in a row and then put it down. Twice in a row, listen to it twice in a row and watch how your life changes. Simple, 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 simple. Um, George, good morning, George. Hey, Dolce, Jim Mars, can I keep going through the three shredded program until I get to 7% body fat? I'm at 14. That's what many people do. We call it round one, round two, round three, because you go from day one to day 21, you re reverse diet right back to day one, which is a semi refeed, and you go back down again. Many people do that. Um, OC, speak Finland. Say, I can't say that word because I don't know if you're fucking with me. I'm not going to just say words because it could be like really bad words. Uh, and I can't say it. I don't know it. Um, but I'm actually going to screen save it and see if you're messing with me because then we'll build up trust. And if you're screwing me, then I won't say it. Um, but I'll, I'll, if it's a good word, then I'll say it. I apologize that I don't know Finnish. Larry. Uh, Mike just came here from the fighter and the kid. You talked about the importance of awareness and intentional behavior. Do you think self responsibility is missing in our society? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. If you're responsible, if you have self responsibility, if you're intentional, if you're mindful, you're not morbidly overweight. You're not morbidly obese. You're not overweight. You're not raising overweight kids with diabetes. It's true. You're not living in the society that you do. You're not creating the culture that we do. You're not feeding into the, the racism, the sexism, the xenophobia, the hatred. You're not lurk, look, living life like that. That's what breaks my heart. And I don't talk about political commentary, and I won't talk about political commentary because it's too divisive. But my philosophy is Jesus Christ, guys and girls, we're all in this together. We're all here together. Let's be a community. Black, white, like I, white skin color, gender, like, come on, let's all be healthy and happy, support and be positive of each other. And unfortunately, most of the conversation is controlled by the elites, the 1%, the plus 1%. The corporate elites, the global elites, they build that divisiveness on purpose because it sells. It sells, it just, and let's say that there's no ulterior motive, it just sells copy. It's the Yankee, it's the Yankees versus the Red Sox, man. That's all it is. It's, it's, it's the, the, the Cowboys versus the Giants. That's all it is. It, they're just, you're just building your team. It's red team, blue team, black team, white team. You're just building your team. You create these funnels. You identify with these tribes, and then you consume whatever content project um, or, or, or narrative or whatever. That shit pisses me off. But this goes into eating. Oh, everybody eats like that. Oh, well, everybody eats like that. You got to live a little Dolce. Just live a little Dolce. Like, dude, shut the fuck up. You're dying. You're dying. Like that, that's what it is. So stop believing what pop culture tells you about, you know, all the fucking bullshit. Like Jerry Seinfeld does such a great, great, great spot. I'm a big Seinfeld fan. Big spot um, uh, or a bit on these soda commercials. Like why is everybody in a soda commercial? Like they open the soda and like this party explodes and they're just so happy and like hot girls in bikinis and they're, they're snow skiing and waterboarding and like partying up and all this stuff. Drinking a fucking soda. He's like, yeah, I open a soda, like, I just get a tummy ache. Like, th th that's really what it is. So you don't believe any of that shit. Um, what's your opinion on CBD? I see great data on CBD and great anecdotal evidence from our, you know, contacts. I've tried it when I had a serious ish hip issue a few months back. I didn't see, I didn't notice a result for me. I might just not be a responder. Maybe I had, I had pretty good quality um, CBD from one of the local Nevada based companies, which is top notch company. Maybe it was the wrong dose. I don't know, but it didn't work well for me, but it seemed to work really well for a lot of other people. And I'll try again. Um, Edi, can you guys help me do a survey? The link already in my discussion emergency. How dare you? Nope. I'm removing that. I'm not going to report you. I'm not going to block you, but don't be spamming our pages, please. Don't be spamming our pages. Build your own page. We don't spam anybody else's page. Be cool. Engage in conversation, but don't host links. Don't sell products here. We got to remove it. Um, 
Shrunken head. Is fartlek training with kettlebells viable? Also, could cold showers after workouts? Is fartlek training with kettlebells viable? And yeah, that's considered more of like a circuit or even a Tabata style training. Fartlek means speed play. It's it's a running, I'm an endurance style of training program. Speed play means like short little sprints built into long, playful, enjoyable moments of activity. So it's like jogging like fast walking, even jogging with short bouts of sprints built in. That's fartlek play. David Bodine, how do you feel about white potatoes? I love them. I love them. I love white potatoes with a scoop of Greek yogurt, whole fat, plain Greek yogurt. Oh my God. Or a tab of grass fed butter. Yum, yum. Alessandro. What's up, Alessandro? Ciao. Um, David soda makes me sick, but I couldn't even drink. So it make me puke. When you come in on the mind pump podcast, their programs are just like what you preach for building muscle. You all be a great podcast. Let them know. We tried a while back and my schedule was a little crazy and I didn't get on, couldn't get on. Um, but let the boys know that is time guys and girls. It's time to shut it down. I appreciate you all being here. Follow us on Instagram, subscribe to the channel, click on notifications, go to the Dolce right now to start the most successful weight loss program ever devised. Boom.